Around this time in the quarter last quarter, I was taken to the hospital by my parents, and there I was committed to a psych ward, where despite my best efforts to get out, I stayed for four days. I was suffering from a manic break from reality, and in the psych ward I was diagnosed with bipolar 1 disorder. According to Salem Health, 1.6% of the American population suffers from some form of bipolar disorder. And today, I want, to take, <coughs> I, want to, I want to talk about the different types of the disorder, symptoms to look out for, and how bipolar is treated. First of all, what is bipolar in general? Well, according to the Mayo Clinic, bipolar disorder is a mental health condition that causes extreme mood swings that include emotional highs, mania or hypomania, and lows, depression. And according to Salem Health, bipolar disorder has been identified as a major psychiatric disorder characterized by dramatic mood and behavior changes. These changes, ranging from episodes of high euphoric moods to deep depressions with accompanying behavioral and personality changes, are devastating to those with the disorder and perplexing to the loved ones of those affected. So there are two main types of bipolar disorder. There's type 1 and type 2. The first type, bipolar 1 disorder, is what I was diagnosed with. It is characterized by periods of depression and periods of mania. Now most people know what depression is, the sadness, the emptiness, the guilt feelings that come along with it. But what is mania? It's almost the opposite, and people who are manic feel really good, too good. You feel like you can accomplish anything, which according to Salem Health is called manic grandiosity. I definitely was victim to this. During my manic episode that had me hospitalized, I thought I could do anything. I thought I was the king of the world. I thought I had answered all the problems that I had ever had and that anybody had had. I thought I could, I really thought I could do anything. And it doesn't seem unrealistic. It doesn't seem stupid to you when you're having it happen to you because you just, you can't know. You can't, you can't know what it's like until it happens. So bipolar 2 is a little different in that it has the depression and the lows that come along with that. But instead of these full-blown manic episodes, they experience periods of hypomania which is like mania and includes disinhibition and elation, but is less severe in intensity. It is important to note that bipolar 2 is not a less severe version of bipolar 1, but a different diagnosis altogether. And another type of sort of bipolar is cyclothemia, and it's <coughs> where you're alternating between these periods of hypomania and these low depressed states. And this is connected to seasonal affective disorder, I don't know if you've heard of that, where in the in the summer times and the spring times, the people have they're in these hypomanic states where they're <coughs> where they're uh, motivated, super motivated, and taking on all these tasks. And then in the winter months, they get super depressed and lonely. And that's an example of cyclothemia. So some symptoms to watch out for <coughs> with the depression side of things. If you're looking in your friends and family, the slow, there's a slowness, a lethargy. Um, and oversleeping or overeating or, or not eating enough. And then for the manic, there's these high moods, uh, euphoric, super happy in a good mood, talking fast or overspending. Those are some symptoms of the, of the manic sides of things. So how are all of these things treated? Well, there are three main kinds of medications that are used to treat bipolar disorder. The first is mood, st mood stabilizers. So these are medications that help to level out your mood, turn the sharp highs and deep lows into a more leveled out continuum. And these include medications like lithium, which is actually what I take and I have right here. And then another type of medication, and this is more used to treat the manic side of things, um, is antipsychotics, such as olanzapine, which is what I take and I have right here, and risperidol, and it helps you it helps even things out, get you more thinking straight about things. And according to Lancet, antipsychotic drugs seem to be a better than anticonvulsants and lithium in treatment of manic episodes. Olanzapine, risperidone, and haloperidol seem to have the best profile presently available of presently available agents. And so yeah, like I said, olanzapine is what I take. <laughs> and so the third type. Um, the third type of medication that I describe is antidepressants, and this is to treat the depressed side of bipolar. But doctors must be careful when prescribing antidepressants because they can cause a switch from a depressed to a manic episode. In fact, this is what happened to me. Um, during about the summer, summer before school started, I went to a psychiatrist and uh, 
and they prescribed me antidepressants. Uh, and so I started taking them, and into the school year, I, I started feeling good, like I'd figured these things out. Um, but they, what they did was they actually caused a switch from the depressed state that I was in into a manic state, um, and that's what, that's, what, that's what caused me to be hospitalized. Um, so yeah, an important part of medication is dealing with the side effects. Um, so, like for me, when I was prescribed these medications at first, I was having to deal with this weakness and I was really sleepy and lethargic from the medications, with them, from the medications I was on. So now I'm talking to my psychiatrist and getting the medication sorted out in a way that best works for me, in a way with minimized side effects, but still, um, <coughs> but still doing the job. So that's important that all people with bipolar take an active role in their medication plans and in talking with their psychiatrist and or therapists. Another way of treatment, and I've talked about this a little already, is hospitalization. So when a patient is a danger to himself or others because of the delusions that can come along with bipolar 1 disorder, then hospitalization may be required. Like for me, I thought that I had figured out the secret to my food allergy, and I'm allergic to peanuts, and I thought that I had figured out I somehow healed myself into not being able, not being allergic to peanuts, and so that might have been one of the things which, <coughs> which ticked off the ER um, nurses and doctors working there that I should be hospitalized because I was these delusions that I had were making me <coughs> a danger to myself. So yeah, hospitalization gives the patient time to get on a medication treatment that works and set up a treatment plan for the future which also may include the last treatment, which is therapy. Therapy can help a person with bipolar disorder because they can learn the symptoms and learn how to control these manic ups and depressed lows. Therapy is always recommended adjunct to any medication prescribed by a psychiatrist. So now you know the different types of bipolar disorder and what symptoms to look out for. You can keep an eye out and look out for your friends and family, people around you who may, have, who may show the warning signs. And now that you know the different treatment options, you can be more cognizant of the ordeal that a bipolar person might be going through. Thank you.